Don't you worry about sitting down. Just stand right on your feet. You get deeper down in your pocket that way. But I, I, believe, I believe it'd be good to just let that sister keep on singing. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think that's right?
So this morning, you don't have to wait till the altar call. I feel like saying this before they sang. Sometimes we get into a formality and a tradition, and we think in church, and we've got to wait till the preacher gives the invitation. I got news for you. When that conviction begins to tug at your heart, when the Lord begins to deal with you, that's the very moment that you need to get out of your seat, no matter what's going on. It matters. Get over this hole. Because you talking to Jesus is the most important thing that can ever happen in this church today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have a little talk with Jesus a while. Can we? Amen. You might be here broken this morning. You might be having family trouble. Uh, you might have walked in with a smile, but inside there's things going on nobody can see. There's tears falling nobody can see. There's cries coming out that nobody can hear. But I'm telling you, Jesus is able to fix your problem this morning. He's a fixing man, fixing souls and bodies all over this land. And if you'll bring it to him, you say, preacher, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I, 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 I've been living like I'm saved. Everybody thinks I'm saved. i got news for you. I'd rather come to this altar and have people think what they want to think as to walk out that door and die lost and go to hell. I would. I'd rather come to this altar knowing that I'm a Christian but I'm having struggles as to hide them struggles and walk out that door and maybe the devil will steal my jobs. Oh, my. 
Anybody feel the Lord in this house? Well, won't that be hallelujah be when we step on the other
teaching on that Holy Ghost in Sunday school. I told him this morning in Sunday school that Jacob raised up after wrestling all night with the Lord and seeing visions of angels descending and us sitting upon the ladder. The Bible said he took that pillar, that rock, that pillow that he had. The Bible said he called it the house of God and then poured oil all over it. Anywhere the church is gathered, the Holy Ghost comes. I said, anywhere the body of Christ gets together, you know the Ghost you call it off you. Anywhere the heart of the church gets together, that Holy Ghost comes. I heard Jesus say, go to that upper room and wait till you be a new with power from on high. If you'll do that, if you'll carry that, I'll send the comforter, the promise of the Father. I'm glad he's here this morning, aren't you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6 this morning. Luke chapter 6. <coughs> Woke up early this morning with this scripture running through my mind. I have no notes I'm preaching from my heart this morning. Is that alright? I don't think Alva was off base this morning when he talked about what he talked about trying to get somebody just to come and talk to Jesus. I found out that prayer changes things. I learned that when I was a little boy going to Sunday View Baptist Church, they used to say prayer changes things, and I believe it still does. If you don't believe that, it changed this young man at the age of 18 years old. When God came into my life, it changed me. Prayer changes stuff. You sick this morning, it can get you healed. I said prayer can get you healed. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, the Bible said. Hallelujah. You're depressed? Prayer can make you joyful. Glory to God. I feel like preaching a little bit this morning. Y'all ready for this? Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Why call you, or why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Words written and read by the Lord. Why are you calling me Lord, but you don't obey what I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood arose and the stream beat violently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did be violently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. I want to preach this morning on the house that God builds. Is that alright? On the house that God builds. Now no doubt this morning, I really feel the Holy Ghost coming up here. No doubt this morning that most of us, all of us under the sound of my voice as sometimes Sister Shirley going to go through a storm. Amen. I was amused and amazed at Luke chapter 6. I thought it to be earlier in that book that Jesus calls his disciples. But no, sir, when I read the chapter this morning, I found out that it was in Luke chapter 6 that Jesus went out and began to cast out unclean spirits. And the Bible said that the whole moment 
show up here in the time. There'll be storms to rise. When I got saved, I got a thought that honor. I felt like a new man. I was a new man. I walked out of that church. I had joy. I come back Sunday night. I had joy. I come Wednesday night. I had joy. I go to Ray. I came service after service. For about three months, I had joy. I could, you mentioned the name of Jesus to me, and tears would roll out of my eyes. There wasn't nothing changed on the outside, but something had changed on the inside. I was being made. I loved it. 
And how many knows that spiritually there's sometimes when you go through storms where you just don't think you're going to make it? Storms. Come here, Mike. Come here, Craig. You can help me now. Storms. Can I give you a scripture? I quoted this to Aaron earlier. Be mindful that you stand lest you fall. Are you with me? Quote that scripture right there. Be mindful that you stand lest you fall. Don't he look like he's standing? He a good Christian. He's the bass player here at the house of God. He's, he's full of the Lord. Everything going good. And he's smiling until the wind comes. The wind. The wind. And, and the rain falls. Are y'all helping me? Bring me back this way. We, we need to rock it. The wind and the rain and the hail comes. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. The storm arises. And now he's unstable. And the enemy Your own choice, and you fail. Come on, 
There's storms of temptation. What's that scripture? How's that scripture start out? <coughs> a brother overtaken in the fall. If a man be overtaken in the fall. If a man be overtaken in the fall. Thank you, brother. <laughs> yes, he just starts quoting the scripture. The verse from chapter. If a man be overtaken in the fall, you which are spiritual, do what? Restore. Such a one. In the spirit of what? Meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Come on, somebody. I'm going to sleep 
when we dark on the other side, let me know. Have you ever been through a storm when you felt like Jesus wasn't even on board? Wasn't even paying attention to you? But the Bible said that while they're sailing, the winds begin to blow. The rain begins to fall. Hell begins. They're in a storm. It is beating violently upon that ship and it's rocking it. And finally one of them looks on the other and says, Does not the master even care? He's on board, but he don't even care. Thank you, man. I've been there before. Lord, where are you at? I know you're with me, but where are you at? Gate talking. Right. One of them said, go down and wake him up. They went down the hull of that ship. Walked in. Could you imagine that walking over? Hey, you need to get up. <laughs> they shook him. Lord, and here's how they woke him up. Lord, do you not care that we perish? Now he's in the same storm they're in. But a total different attitude. What they didn't realize was that boat couldn't have went down with him on board no matter how many times the wind got beat against him. Jesus raises that white sleep out of his eyes. Hey, what do you do when you're going through a storm and Jesus is snoring? <laughs> Jesus sits up, wipes the sleep out of his eyes and says, oh, you faithless. <laughs> you, you men of little faith. Right. He goes up. I love this scripture. He walks out to the bow of, the, or, uh, bow of that ship. That's right. You know what a bow, the word bow comes from? It's the same Hebrew word as pulpit. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same Hebrew word as pulpit. He walks out on that pulpit and commands from that pulpit like a preacher would. Peace! immediately quit blowing. Right. And the waves quit rocking. Right. Now I don't know about this. I heard a preacher say one time, Brother Brian Murphy said one time that he turned around and said peace to the disciples because they were in an uproar. Uh -huh. And then said be still to the storm. So preach on preacher Brian. That'll be fine. Peace be still. Yes. And the winds and the storm immediately cease. Yes. Right. And the Bible said that ship docks on the other side. Now I got three of my five minutes left. Here we go. Ready? Jesus steps off the boat onto the shore. And immediately out of the tombs, a man that's full of 2,000 demons comes running down off that hill. Runs and falls at the feet of Jesus. What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of David? Don't cast us out before our time. Jesus said, what's your name? <coughs> that head demon said, my name's Legion, for we are many. He sounded like schizophrenic to me. My name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus said, come out of here. Here's a man been cutting himself with stones, living among the tombs all his life, lost his family, lost his friends, lost his home, couldn't go home to watch his children play. He was a, play. He was a lunatic. Crazy. I'm a firm believer that this is what happened. From where those tombs was, if you went there today, you could see right over that sea. And I believe he was looking for those from those tombs. Crying and cutting himself to stone, looking out over that sea, and all of a sudden he sees the storm arise. And all of a sudden he sees the ship in the midst of the storm. And the disciples tried to hold on to the ship. And then in just a moment, he sees that Galilean walk up out of the hull of that ship. And walk out, stretch his hand over and say, peace be still. And it hit that, lady, that, that man, that lunatic's mind, if he can calm nature. What could he do for me? I hope that ship's headed this way. If he can calm the wind and he can calm the rain and he can calm the still storm, he can calm the storm in my life. That's why he tore out of those tombs. That's why he walked down that slippery slope. That's why he fell at the master's feet and said, I want you. Do a miracle out there. Can you do one for me? Come on, man. Only God, only. Jesus.
Jesus cast those demons into that heart of swine. They run down that sleep, that, that steepy slope and drowned in the sea. And you know what Jesus does? Something crazy. I love him because he's crazy. Strange. That's strange. You know what he does? He's his dad. He looks at them and says, get back on the boat. Go back to the other side. I'll meet you on the other side. That's right. right? Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and I believe at the time he said it, all them guys turned and looked over the sea. And here comes the wind again. And here's the storm. And here's the rain. You mean to tell us you're sending us right back into another storm? And now you're saying... It was one thing for you to be on board asleep. Now you're saying you're not even going with us? Nope. <laughs> now, now you're going to learn how to have faith. Right back on the boat, Jesus goes to the top of the mountain to pray. Read it. It's in there, Mark chapter 5. While he's praying, he's looking over that sea. And he sees that storm come. And that ship's beating again. And those disciples are fighting to do their best. And all of a sudden, he finally, he finally says, Well, I better go to him. <laughs> and he does something that nobody else has ever done. <laughs> he walked Not only is nature obeying him like it did with the wind, now he's defying nature. If you think you're so spiritual, go over here to North Lake. Go out in your pontoon boat. Talk in tongues for 10 minutes and then jump out. See if you walk back to the shore. You won't do it, I promise you. But Jesus just steps out on that water. He just starts walking. And he's going toward them when John sees him and says, It's a ghost. Look at that out there on that sea. Something's walking toward us. One of them said, oh, or John said, that's not a ghost. That's Jesus. <laughs> Peter runs to the... God help me. Peter runs to the bow of that ship. He puts himself in the pulpit. Looks out from that pulpit and says, Master, if it's you, bid me to come unto you walking on the water. Let Let me hurry. He goes walking. 
The storm still rages. But he's walking through it. The key to coming through a storm is keep walking. Amen. Keep walking. He's walking now. And about the time he gets to the Lord, he takes his eyes off of the master. And he puts it on the storm. He starts looking at the wind blowing. The effects of that wind. And he starts sinking. You know, sinking is, is a process. I preach all the Sinking. Spiritually sinking. Is a process. You don't just wake up one morning and say, I think I'm going to quit God today. You sink. A little bit at a time. But right before he goes under. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. You know what the Bible says? The Lord taught the scripture. You know what the Bible says? And Peter began to sink. When Jesus saw him start to sink. The water didn't even get over his ankles till Jesus. Is that scripture? When he begins to say, Lord, save me. See, your issue is that most people wait until they're sunk. When you start having issues that you recognize your spirit's not right with God, or that you're struggling. That's the time to cry out to God. Don't wait until all the devils have come. Don't wait until you messed up. Lord Jesus, save me. And immediately the Lord reached out and took him by the right hand and picked him up. Now, I don't know about you, but you, you preach this however you want to. Thank you, man. But let me tell you, I'm going to preach it since it's my message this morning. I don't know how Peter got back to that boat. The scripture don't tell us. But I believe the Lord immediately grabbed hold of him and said, turn around. You're going to walk with me. Because the whole key to us coming through the storm is walking with Christ. They got back in that boat and they went back to the other side. Hear me now, and I'm closing. I will go to the end if you will. Get us up to sing out. The girls can come back and stuff. Thank you. The key, the key, is to not take your eye off of God. We all have done it. Can I, can I be transparent for a minute? I've got right in that pulpit before with my eyes on the storm and not on Jesus. I've crawled into that pulpit with more on my mind of what they've said, what they've thrown at me, the accusations they've made. More on my mind than having the mind of Christ. The reality is, is when you when you overcome the storm is when you look up and you link up with Christ and you walk through it. Did you hear what I said? I said you walk through it. By a show of hands this morning, how many of y'all have ever been through a storm? Can I share something? You're here this morning because you made it. Listen to me. The preacher, of that storm has come. I don't even know if I'm right with God or not. I'm, I'm going to give you the key. I'm going to answer this question right here. Listen to me. I've had people run into my office and say, I've been in church for 20 years. I've watched him shout, praise God, live for God, have a desire for God. And the devil, somebody comes along and says, maybe you're not saved because of the storm. Insecurity comes in storms. 
We'll tell you whether I'm going to tell you how to know if you're saved or not. First of all, if you have a desire to live for God, the devil, the flesh, has no desire to live for God. Amen. If you have a desire to live for God, it ain't your flesh wanting to live for God. It's that inner man in you. Right. That wants to live for God. If you're mindful of the things of God, you're praying, you're reading, you're you're seeking the face of God. The devil don't do that and flesh don't do it. And just let me say another thing. The devil would be awful stupid to come to you and say you ain't saved. Because if he tells you you ain't saved, you just get saved. The devil would do more of telling you you are saved when you're not than tell you you're not saved when you are. Storms unstable. Insecurity. If you'll stand and walk with the Lord, I promise you, you'll come through the storm. As they say this morning.
God for the storms. And uh, thank you for the wind and the rain. The thing that always got me about Mark chapter 4 was the fact that the Bible said that it beat upon that ship until the ship was now full. And a lot of folks think if you get a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain, oh, I've been through a big one. Uh, I mean, know their ship was full. Sometimes the enemy will pour things until it's completely full. You'll say, Lord, I just can't go. Have you ever said that, Lord, I just can't go no more. I can't do it more. But I like the scripture because the scripture said no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God who is faithful. God who is faithful. I'll let you be tempted above that which you're able. But with every temptation, He'll make a way for your escape that you may be able to bear it. I'm telling you this morning, as we get ready to go our way, you can handle it. You were made to handle the burden. You were made to carry the cross because you're not carrying it alone. You've got the big hand of God and the devil can't do nothing about it. Would you give Jesus a big hand? I want you to come back tonight. We've been in service to be here tonight. Be praying for me. I'll be preaching in Barberville, Kentucky. I have got a blister on my stump down inside my socket. Somehow another rubbed a blister on it and I think it's from that other socket. Be praying God to heal that because I don't want more leg cut off. Man, not looking to get more leg cut off either. But uh, be praying for us that God will help us that somebody will hear the word of the Lord and uh, be saved. Amen. Do you love Jesus real good? All right. And I'll tell you what would be a good thing to do if you just turn around and start shaking hands and fellowship, love one another, and y'all come back tonight for service. Amen. You dismiss the name of the Lord.